Good evening. The April 10th, 2024 Lyle Township Board meeting is open to employees and the public. There are two ways to participate in person and or by audio video conference. Yep. The in-person board meeting will, is being held tonight in the boardroom with the Lyle Township offices at 4711 Indiana Avenue in Lyle, Illinois. And we're going to go ahead and call the meeting to order. And we're going to start with a roll call. Um, sure. Um, Secretary, I'm uh, sorry, Supervisor Pro Tem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, uh, Geist. Here. Here. Uh, Trustee Page. Here. Trustee McGovern. Here. Assessor Trowbridge. Here. Commissioner Young. Here. Don't you have to be appointed? Don't the trustees have to make an appointment to make her supervisor? You don't have to. No. No. It's Pro Tem. Yep. All right. We're going to go ahead and pledge of allegiance, please. Right. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I am here via Zoom. Um, because your supervisor is, and I'm not on vacation. Uh, the governor has three different methods and reasons for why somebody cannot. Uh, can zoom in, and one is for a family issue. So I'm zooming. She's correct. It's one of those three issues. I was not aware of that. I thought it was vacation as well. Um, in that case, then she is the supervisor of this meeting. Okay. Dr. Paul, let's just make a note that the supervisor, Diane Hewitt, is present in full capacity. And stated for uh, which purpose as well, for uh, family issues. For family issues. Yes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start with public comment. Has everyone checked in and signed in? Okay, is there anyone who'd like to speak? Ms. Goldenberg? Yes. My name is Claire Goldenberg. I was pleased that the town hall meeting concluded within a reasonable time period. Of course, it was not exactly the meeting of the people for the people it is purported to be, as there was no interaction allowed. So how exactly it differs from a monthly board meeting, I am not clear about. After last month's meeting, during which there were discussions and preparation for the town hall meeting, I emailed the clerk's office because I was confused as to how exactly a citizen could get an agenda item added to the town hall's agenda. Searching the website, I never found any reference to this question, even though there is a town hall tab on the website. Regarding how we get documents to the clerk, there is a mention of filing papers with the clerk on the website, but nothing about the town hall specifically. I really tried to impart the fact that I felt the information was lacking and was asking that the clerk in her capacity to look into ways that may make it more clear for the public to understand the process for the town hall. She preferred to be argumentative and obtuse and insisted on complaining about the incident that had already occurred and was voted on, which no one was questioning the validity of, rather than address my concern for the community to move forward and make the process better. So again, Sir Kellowitz, I will ask again, what plans do you have to make the process for understanding town hall meetings and how to get involved by adding agenda items more transparent for our community. Second, I have been looking at for the budget documents online and have been disappointed that I have not been able to find them. During my search for them, I thought at least I'd find something about them in the minutes from the public hearing on the budget. However, I was again, extremely disappointed to learn that not only were they not available, online, neither were any minutes from any meeting since July 6 of 2023. I believe these minutes <laughs> fall under the purview of the clerk. So what's up, Clerk Palowitz? Lastly, I would like to point out 
that the clerk is in violation of guideline number 10 of your public comment guidelines. And at the point of order on the minutes from town hall dated April 18th, on the minutes from town hall dated to April 18th, 2023, they should be amended and re-voted on next year to eliminate the specifics the clerk erroneously included and replace it with the speaker's names. Any other minutes in which she may have included specifics, specifics should also be amended. Thank you. Next member of the audience. Ms. Ruby. Yeah. yeah, I'm Jerry Galloway from LAMP. And uh, I was, I was, uh, I was getting ready to come to this meeting tonight. And my wife asked me, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to a meeting. She said, another meeting? Because I was at the town meeting last night. I was at a different meeting on Monday night. She said, what is this meeting for? And I, I told her, I said, I said, I, I'm going to go talk to uh, to uh, the trustees about the uh, lack of senior services in Lyle Township. And she said, what do you mean? I said, we don't have any senior services. She didn't know that we didn't have any senior services. This is my wife. And uh, I, I, I really, I really am disappointed in uh, in uh, how that's been handled. Uh, I was disappointed because you had you had personnel to handle senior service issues, and uh, those per the one person was let go, and the other person I think didn't want to pick up the whole load uh, of, a, of a full time uh, person who was let go plus her her part time position. Uh, I'm assuming that's what. I'm assuming that's what uh, <clears throat> what the intention was was to you get a, a, a part time person to pick up one and a half uh, times for uh, normal workload. In any case, uh, I have another another question, and and, and that is, uh, uh, when will we have job descriptions for the employees here? Uh, there were there were complaints in the past. It seems to me that maybe going back a year about no job descriptions. To my knowledge, there are no jobs descriptions for the employees of the township. And I, I, I believe that's a problem. I mean, you formed a personnel committee and that was ostensibly, that was ostensibly, that was ostensibly to, to handle uh, personnel issues. And I, I, it seems to me that this is kind of a shortcoming. Uh, okay, well, that's pretty much what I have to say for tonight. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak? Yes. Please state your name. My name is Lee Vian. Uh, I live in Wild Hunter. I have a couple of comments in regard to the recent tree project and motor subdivision. To be fair, there are two sides to any issue in life. On the township side, trees can be dangerous. They can fall on people, hurt cars, property, and the township could have liability. But part of this problem was created by the township. I have lived and walked in this community for 25 plus years. It seems like a periodical, periodically a massive tree chopping ensues. And while I'm sure that the township employees are doing the best they can, it is obvious to me that they are not trained arborists. These are big overgrown trees that have been extensively limbed up, putting a lot of weight on the end of the branches. The purpose of trimming trees is to make them safe and strong. I would recommend that the township have a certified arborist to assess the existing trees, and for the township to have a plan in place for a placement option. Um, we did have a very severe tornado hit uh, Widrick, uh, wiped out a friend's house um, and Naperville. We need to plan and prepare for that because there may be one that comes through here also. As far as it being expensive to send a crew out to cut a couple of branches and to just cut the whole tree down, we need some shade in our neighborhood. And I do quote, well, no, I won't do that. And public safety necessitates that you should budget for it and plan the funds should be spent. Several years ago, I attended a symposium at our grade entitled Go to 2030. 
The general gist was that the climate is indeed changing rapidly, too rapidly for some species to keep up with. They will die off. Experts gave options on what species of trees and other vegetation may survive and flourish in the coming conditions of flood, drought, and higher heat, heat indexes, which I'm sure you've all experienced in your own homes and yards. Um, a comment was made by some of the attendees would not be alive in 2030. It got some good natured laughs. But on the whole, many were keen to plan for the future. They knew that steps needed to be taken, and they were willing to take it on. As a public comment, many also were willing to accept that changes were needed. They were just asking for help in doing this. They described the difficulties they were facing digging where surface rooted tree had been removed. No one really seemed to listen. No plan was put off or put forth. Surely you don't cut down what approximately 25 trees and not have a plan how to manage the parkway afterwards. By the way, with silver maples, once the trees uh, roots decompose, the ground will sink. And I've had ground sink in like a foot. The township has bulk purchasing power. They could help residents get a discount to replace their Fine. trees. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll come back next time. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak? Just finish. I Can you just finish the past? Can you stay Harry, oh, yeah. your name? Oh, Harry Wildfield. Second name is W I L D F E U E R. And it says, why did we have conversation before the meeting and then not at the end of the meeting? It seems that this logical thing and any other organization I've ever been part of. After a meeting, you get a chance to express yourself mm -hmm. as to what went on. Here, I can have my dessert before I have my meal, but then I'm not satisfied with my meal. I'd like to know that we had a chance to discuss what was done at the meeting. Uh, after the meeting, rather than have us try to uh, imagine what it's going to be, Discussed. It's going to be discussed um, <clears throat> before the uh, before the meeting begins. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience would like to speak? Anyone on Zoom like to speak? You can raise your hand too quickly. Please go ahead and speak. Hi. Uh, I put my video on here. Hi, Sue Quigley, twenty-five year resident of Lyle, um, village of Lyle. I was happy to see that some of the items that were voted on in the last meeting, instead of postponing them to the next meeting, as we have done frequently in the past. The business of monthly meetings is to get motions made, seconded, discussed and debated, called, and then record the vote. Once each trustee is asked how they vote, it should be recorded and the next trustee should be asked. At the last board meeting, this process wasn't observed. After an outburst by the board, not the public, the trustee was made to restate their vote. The trustee should not be questioned or debated about their vote once the question has been called. This is yet another reason the meetings tend to take so much longer than needed to conduct business. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Quigley. Anyone else on the Zoom like to raise their hand? We have public comment. There's a tab. Um, there wasn't prior to the meeting. Um, if you click on behind the Zoom, and is that the public? No. What? Well, one second. Give me the link for the public comments online so I can check. There are none online. There are none. Okay, we'll move, move along. Um, accountant's report. Am I giving the report? There's a. Mm -hmm.
Thank you to everyone who attended the town hall meeting last night. You had some received some of this information as well. Hopefully you pick these things up. So the uh, balance sheet as of March 31st has a fund balance for the highway groups of $2,910,870.99. We're going to go through each of these or do we want them just to be able to read the packet? Um, these are in the packet. Okay. So I'm filling in for the <laughs> supervisor, yeah. right? So how much of this do you want? Am I do I need to cover other than what they're going to be able to read? Does everyone have? So usually we ask if there's any questions. We show the um, if you show your screen and you go over the highlights of pieces. Okay. And so this where, is where questions where are, are the, generally answered. Okay. Where where did you set the links up on here? Ruby, do you know where they're they, they went away. They're on her email. Oh, in her email? They're on the website in the board reports under accounting. In the packet. So, like the accounting. so if, however you want to go to get there, if you want to go to the website, that's fine too. Just so you know. There's one open. Just so you guys, they yeah. are in the packet. Right. So, I mean, they're in the packet. So yes. Are there any yes, questions no. about the accountant's report? Do you have any more packets or no? There, are there any more here? Other Actually, there was an extra. There was there. here. This is an extra. They are online. And they're aligned as well. And if anybody wants copies, you could use these. <coughs> Okay, there's no questions. We're going to go ahead and move along. Okay, audit of bills and claims. Can I get a motion to I'll move? make a motion to move into the audit of expenditures? Can Second. I get a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, let's move along. So we conducted the audit with the accountant Jake and yes. there were some questions. All right, so the first, I don't know how y'all wanna handle this, but we owe money to Lyle, to the school for renting the building. We approved the payments to them. So uh, what, he said that we can get it into the next check run, correct? Yeah. Right. Well, so, it'll be in the next check run, but it will also, Oh, goodness. It will also, we can cut the check sooner. Okay. So that was the one thing. And what was the other one? Pace bill. We had a question about the Comcast bill. This is the one that was split in two um, between, I think it was between the assessor's office and the supervisor's office. So this was a Comcast bill that was should have been canceled a year prior. Uh, if it's the if it's a Comcast bill that between the highway commissioner and the assessor's office, yes, that's a that's a, uh, the highway commissioner allowed us to piggyback on his account or our um, our iPads, so it's a service that allows us to get access by Wi-Fi, and we just pay our portion of that bill. Is that between me and him? No, no. Okay. This okay. one was no. Yeah, this was between. The supervisor's office and the assessor's office. Six hundred and twenty dollars twenty five cents split between. Yeah, that that was a that was a a uh, telephone system that uh, the assessor's office got rid of two years ago in February. Okay. It's so why were we still being billed if we got rid of it two years ago in February? I don't know. So I do know that how Comcast works is if you do call them and cancel. There, you still have to do paperwork. So if the paperwork doesn't get done, they'll still continue to bill you as if you are still in an active account. So do we believe that's what happened? We, uh, when when Supervisor Hewitt um, uh, asked to bring this new system in place, they said that they were going to they were going to eliminate the old service and be able to supposedly to save money. 
And um, to that end, they I was directed to take my the telephone serve telephones, physical telephones, and return them. Um, and that's what I did in February. The the uh, bill payments um, I had no knowledge of and did not have access to. Those were being those were being billed to the township here and being paid by the township. I had no no I had no knowledge of it um, until uh, with or Lisa left. She said that the, there was a bill a bill that she was noticing and she thought it was a little bit high and asked me to take a look at it. I did not have access to it so i went through the process through comcast to get a uh, password so i could actually get access to it and i saw that it was i saw what it was for and i told them that we were not we were not supposed to be paying for this okay. so i i reached out to comcast and filled up forms to get that portion of it from them. so we know now that this is we are no longer going to get invoiced from them, we are we are okay. Are we satisfied so, then? Uh, Assessor Durbridge, yeah. this is uh, this six hundred and twenty five dollars is coded to you. No, uh, I, we're, we're I, and I'm, I really apologize to the trustees, um, but I still do not have access to books. So you did not. You did not approve this bill, no, and it's being coded to and taken off your budget. I would strongly object to having that taken so off my like line. You can set that aside. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item. Thank, Thank you. you. Was that it? I the, this one was the other one was the fifth, third. Oh, yes, all right, so. Yep. Yeah, but go I, ahead. Well, no, go ahead. I think you would explain it better. It was very confusing. Yeah. What I, 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 I'm not even sure I could explain it properly. So, okay. So there are two bills um, where um, checks need to be written to Fifth Third Bank because we use the account to pay a bill. So if the bills were paid online using the credit card for Fifth Third, because it's a, it's a, what's the word? A refundable, a rebuildable, or replenish, yeah, yeah, replenishable. Sorry, I couldn't think of the word. Account. But there's no backup documentation for it. There's just screenshots of. That's different. That's, that's a different the other one. one. Yeah, that's okay. a completely different one. Yeah. So maybe Supervisor Hewitt, you can shed some light on this one. She, she appears to be. She's gone. Uh, she lost access. She's on a online. Is she point. waiting to come in? Is there a way? Yeah. I mean, she's up in Michigan. They have sketchy services. Mm -hmm. So could have gone. Okay. Well, we'll just. Okay. okay. That's the fifth, third. Yes. yes. Okay. Just making a note. Yeah. I think there's, there's two, two charges to fifth, third bank that do not have a credit card statement. Right. This, the first one was for the website hosting for a year. And then the second one was a little bit more concerning because we needed documentation that we don't have. The only thing that we were provided with was screenshots. From a computer. From a computer. Where it looks like it was possibly paid online right. or an auto pay, but with what card, because we don't have a card. Right. So I think that's why it was a little confusing. If she comes back on, we can right. maybe ask her a little bit later, but otherwise we have to pull those. Oh, right. Somebody just asked to join the time. That is her. Thank yep. You. Supervisor Hewitt, are you there? Yes. So we had a question. I don't know if you, um, I, I think you just came in so you didn't hear. There's two charges. Um, there's two uh, checks to be issued to Fifth Third Bank. One is for web hosting, and the second one was for what? Zoom, Zoom um, for the annual fee for Zoom. And we're, what we're not clear about is how those were paid for. Where is the backup documentation for them? So Jim has that documentation. The purchasing policy, all of the were signed for by Jim and by myself. Um, I'm not sure where Jim put that. It should be Jim and Jacob both had that. So I'm not sure where they went to. Well, we we do have a screenshot from a computer. Right. 
But what we're not clear of, is this an auto pay? Is this something we're paying with a credit card? If so, what credit card? Why are we issuing a check for those if we have an online auto pay with a credit card? That's what was confusing. Okay, um, because Zoom and the Squarespace do not take checks. So uh, that's not possible for us to use a credit card. We previously, in order to have those accounts not be closed, have the three-fifths debit card. And we don't have it. We're going through the process of trying to get a credit card. It doesn't, it's apparently taking longer than we expected. But those were put on a credit card for years because it was a credit card. So if they were put on a credit card. We cannot card, pay check or Zoom. No, no, we understand that. I mean, it's we the townships. So it's the debit card that we haven't funded, but it was able to take that as a credit. Okay, I think I understand what happened then. So there was no balance on the replenishable card. And since we use the replenishable card, it put us in a in a sort of a negative in a way. So we had to make a payment to it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Correct. Okay. I think we understand. I think that makes sense. Okay. That's probably um okay. Those All were right. the only questions. Is that it? So do you wanna I'm sorry. Yeah. And there was and I'm I missed a portion because I'm traveling in rural Michigan. Uh, was the pace bill put on there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The pace Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, Supervisor Hood? Okay. Uh, no. Commissioner Young? The attorney's bill includes charges for discussions with the county, who is it going to be, county treasurer or the county clerk concerning the tax levy and how it was filed and whether that was appropriate. Remember, because they're for the uh, yes, mental health board. Mm -hmm. And since he filed it that way, I'm not sure that that's legitimate charges. It's up to the trustees whether that should be charged to the council. I mean, the other clients of his firm included and had a uh, public hearing. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. I mean, I'm of the opinion. So go ahead. So the state's attorney already ruled on this, just so we're all clear that it was the levy, our levy was done properly. Um, and so there is no problem with the mental health levy at all. And that's what the DuPage County State's Attorney has already issued an opinion that literally echoed our attorney's opinion. Supervisor Hewitt, the question was not whether we had done things correctly. It was the bill that we were being charged. It was the fact that we were being charged possibly for an item line item that should have been against the mental health board's budget but it's on our levy which is what the state's attorney was needing to discuss and what our attorney was discussing was the lyle township levy it wasn't the 708 board's levy it was the levy that we are putting forward on our levy Right. Um, I, I think there's two questions here. One is if a mental health uh, board uh, issue should be on the mental health board, uh, you know, a bill. The other one is that we were the only township that needed to have this, who had this issue with the county because we, uh, per advice, did not have a truth and taxation hearing. Um, because of that, the county came to us and said, you're, you're doing this wrong, and we're not going to allocate you the money for the mental health board. So because we chose to do it this way, per advice, we ended up having to have our attorney speak with the state's attorney's office to kind of come to terms with how to do this, what's right and what's wrong. The hard part here is that we're being charged for our attorney to argue with his opinion with the state's attorney, knowing that this advice from the same 
firm to other mental health boards was to have a truth in taxation. So we're having to pay to argue the point where every other new mental health board had a truth in taxation and were advised to have a truth in the taxation hearing. So I'm not sure how much it adds up to, mm -hmm. but it feels very wrong to have to pay for something that ultimately went in our favor, but started still out- still had to pay for it. We had to pay for advice, initial advice of the attorney. To because pay. we were told we didn't need to do something that if we had done it, we wouldn't have been in that situation. So maybe that's something that you can discuss. I'll make Thank a note and Thank speak you. with attorney Seckler. And Thank what do you guys vote for audits and claims? You can exclude that bill or okay. that charge. Sounds like. great. I will put this to- Are there any other questions? What number is that? Five zero nine eight four. The the other question was the insult link bill. If if you oh that was one one sorry there is one one that would be five zero nine seven one. Yep, I have that. Do we know what that is for? Do we have that? Does it? What does it say in the memo? It's confer with Ross Seckler regarding pending board issues from meeting on the 17th of January, and then confer with state representative regarding grant funds available to township, confer with assessor regarding the same, and that was on the 7th of February. I felt like we already shuffled those out. And there's another bill? Yeah, so January. that's from the same cluster so that we had earlier? What's, this... uh, what's the date on that? This or one, again? the check... The check is written on the 28th of March, but the service was provided the 17th of January and then the 2nd of February. So the question with that one was because, you know, Carrie Lynn Ansel Blink is, um, it's an auxiliary, you know, um, representation. They're supposed to be there as, what do you call it? Legal counsel for the board. Legislative counsel. Thank you. Yep. Legislative, <laughs> so close. Legislative counsel for the board in case the board needs a second opinion on it. We're not sure why, the like who initiated this, right. why it was initiated. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be in the purview of what Ansel Blink was hired for. Right. So and I know that the board didn't start right. this. Yep. So I'm not saying she didn't do anything and she's not owed money, but I'm not sure it should be. Um, I'm not sure what it's for. I think that's one of the challenges too is that when we're paying for the same conversation for both sides of the conversation, right? So that's that's a challenge. So what do we want to do with this one? I don't hold it off to the side, I guess, too, until we have a better understanding of what it's for. Can you share that number as well? This no. one is 50971. Just to make a note, uh, when we do vote for approval of bills and claims, if we can just orally state which ones we're excluding, yes. I believe it's the Comcast and two prime bills, but <clears throat> just a reminder. Thanks. Are we excluding Comcast? They were paying Comcast. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. know there was an issue with it. No, no, are we not charging well, we need assessor? I don't okay. think we should. Well, if we, okay. It's already been paid because it was an auto pay. Right. Yeah. But I think right now the question is who, whose line item is it hitting? Right. What How are we coding it? Okay. So I, I think we need to make a decision about that. Yeah. So. Well, in the past, I, they've been charged against the assessor? I'm sorry I asked. I'm I'm sorry. I I would love to get back to you on this as soon as I get access to QuickBooks. What is the hold supervisor? Up QA, do we know what the the holdup is to, for the access? As we're no longer using QuickBooks, so I think either yesterday or today it switched over to Thompson Reuters, and the new and uh, Kelly. And Jacob will be giving um, the assessor the access he's looking for. Supervisor Hewitt, um, tax assessor John, John Trope. We were we had in each of the last several meetings that we have been in, we have all voted and agreed, and you agreed publicly and on the record to restore his access. 
And I'm confused now sitting here today to learn that not only did it not get restored, but now it's obsolete and we don't have it anymore. So now he doesn't even have access to the historical data, possibly to budget line items that affect his budget. I'm so the access that was asked for, and I said this repeatedly, I and there's an email that everybody is copied on, was it apparently the way that it was set up, it can't be um siphoned off into read only and again i gave him at, i gave the approval to do so and the approvals we were in the middle of switching over for the last few weeks i think that in the past we, day we, it was switched we, over but in so we in do all not professional have QuickBooks courtesy anymore okay in professional courtesy we voted and approved for him to have this access restored repeatedly. Many people sitting in this audience have been in the room when we made this request. And so I'm just not understanding why we're deciding today. I don't know, I just, I don't even know. I, I'm at a loss for words, to be honest with you. We're trying so hard every, every meeting, we're trying to get better and do better, but then things like this happen. And then we look like the bad guy because we're challenging you, but you were tasked to do what something. What you're asking for is not possible. Yes, we, we, we asked you to restore the access that was took taken away. That's all we asked for. Who cares about siphoning? Who cares if it's read only, report only? We don't, we don't care. We wanted it restored to the access he's had for it's the last 10 years. It's not possible year. to give you what you're asking for and have audit controls. So you we this, either you have audit controls or we don't 11 have, years, and again, it is not possible to do what you asked. For 11 years, he had this access. It is not impossible. For 11 years, he had this access and he did not impact your audit controls. Please speak, Commissioner Young. It is very possible. I have it and a unique user ID for QuickBooks, QuickBooks would be assigned to Assessor Trowbridge. There would be adequate audit trail and he doesn't, wouldn't have access to change anything, only view. It has not gone away because I still have it. I used it today. Does we address this with Jim Marina? I think we should. Yeah. yeah. You know, the second part that's concerning too. Well, wait, the, the other part of this is we did not give approval to shut down QuickBooks. And we specifically said we wanted QuickBooks to stay intact until we were 100% sure everything was migrated over and everything was taken care of. So you did not have the authority to shut down QuickBooks for anyone. I, I just wanted to add the only, uh, you know, the other part to this is that you're paying checks on the township uh, assessor's portion of the budget that he's not approving or has any knowledge of. So I'm not sure how he can keep in line with the budget or know what's going on if you're unilaterally paying bills for him without his approval. That's the same thing with the road district that you need to approve all your bills. Did the accountant bring up the fact that Assessor Trowbridge did not approve that portion of the bill when he went through the audit? So what he brought up is that um, the way Supervisor Hewitt wanted to handle it was to um, uh, divide it equally in half, 50-50. Um, so. But did he bring up that it was going to be assigned to the assessor's account? The assessor did not approve. He did. Um, he, he did not indicate. We, we noted that uh, the assessor did not. Um, he was directed to write the check split so he listened to well i thought he made very clear to the attendant that he is not allowed to charge any of the counts he did you're right to, to that's why we're discussing it approval the assessor yeah. has to approve his bills i have to approve my bills nothing is supposed to be charged to those accounts without those approvals i guess my question is do we need to reinforce that with the account we did in the conversation today. Okay, thank you. I believe we did. Yeah. And that he's he needs to to honor what the trustees have requested. And if someone wants to circumvent that, we need to be notified. 
I, can I, I, can I uh, say one last thing? I, I want the last regular meeting that we had, uh, we had the accountant here, mm -hmm. and I specifically, specifically told her that there were to be, you know, when it comes to my my budget and my my line items, that no one is to, if, if I don't have a signature on it, it's not approved, it should not be approved to be paid. That's, it's, it's just that simple. And I'm, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm very distraught that a bill would come in after I made that statement at the last meeting that a bill comes in and that directive, I didn't even get notification that it was occurring based on the supervisor's directive of how she wanted to split it. They went through and did the exact, the exact opposite of what I directed them to do. I think that I, I'm very, very, I'm very concerned about that. And I don't know what else is being done. Um, because and you don't have access. Because I don't have access. So and I'm going I'm to be honest with you. Once I do get at this, we're going to go through this. And if, if it has to, I'm going to make, I'm going to make recommendations. An audit. A financial. I audit. recommend an audit. Yeah. We need, we need to go through this. And we need a forensic audit I agree. to go through and find out what's been going on. This is this, in my opinion, this is totally unacceptable. And to for, for this to be occurring underneath us, and then and then presenting it to the trustees with good faith that to believe that what's coming on is is being signed off and, and being approved. Yeah. And that's just wrong. Well, in the audit, we did make sure that the bills that that you had signed off, both of you had signed off there, on all the other bills. That, but that one was definitely there's not one. one other um, Commissioner Young uh, for MetLife, the group insurance help for one thousand six hundred sixty nine dollars and thirteen cents that you did not sign off of. The, um, I think the I need to look at that. That um, you said it's a recurring bill so. that you gave the nod to it, but you didn't not, not sign off on it. Do you want to look at it now before we approve we'll it? Pay it but Sorry, I, I, I pay it. That. Okay. Supervisor Hewitt, I don't know how far off, how long ago you dropped off. Um, what was the last thing you heard? You were debating whether there was authorization, whether I had the authorization to have approved uh, switching off of QuickBooks, and that was a part of the contract. So the board already gave, um, in the contract, when it was discussed, the board already gave the accountants the authorization. And this isn't, a, at this point, a trustee's decision or a supervisor's decision. It was a part of the contract. That the, the, accountant, the accounting firm has no access or control or is in any way privy to QuickBooks. They made that very clear in the last three meetings. And so we need that access restored immediately. We have not, we've already paid for QuickBooks for a period of time. There's no reason to shut that down yet. We need to have this access. They want to. They're going to want to complete a financial audit, Supervisor Hewitt. So we're going to request one more time that this access be restored immediately tomorrow morning, so that he can have the access that he needs so that he can verify the charges that are being placed against his account. He specifically said not to charge any more bills against his account without his knowledge and approval. So we're just, we're reiterating this and the accountant will be notified not to do that further if by your directive to, be, to consult the board first. You wanna move along? Yes. Um, we have another. Approved. Right. That's we what approved. I'm. That's what we're doing. Okay. So I'm with you. I will make a motion to approve the audit of expenditures with these exceptions. We are pulling the invoice to Comcast that has been paid already, automatically paid, but it's been divided. And the reason we're pulling it is we're going to check which account it has been charged against. The check number. The, oh, no. There is no check number to that. There's no check number. This was an auto pay. Yeah, but it, it had a line it item. Did have a, um, it's for 10, 14, 17, and 10, 13, oh, 04. You're right. Okay. Check number 50984 
to Olison, Murphy, Frazier, and McGrath. We are pulling that to double check on the uh, uh, that the proper charges are being charged to the proper person, if I said that right. And 50971 to Ansel Blink. We are questioning whether or not this belongs on the supervisor's side. And that it, though, those are the three that we have questions about. Great. Can we get a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Does it have to be a roll call or to go? Does it have to be roll call? Generally, it should be a roll call, yes. Okay, so roll call, would you do a roll call vote, please? So I'm a little confused, but Supervisor Pro Tem? Yes. <laughs> um, Geis? Did you say yes? Yes. Um, Trustee Page? Yes. Trustee McGovern? Yes. And Supervisor Hewitt? Supervisor Hewitt? It's not about that. It's still a quorum. It's passed. Let me know if you see the blue again. Okay, so um, supervisor's report, I'll run through this quickly. You all can certainly read it in the packet. Food pantry, the food pantry distributed food to 838 families in March of 2024. There were 2,152 people served. The families included 552 children. The dock level refrigerated truck has been purchased and put into use. Yay, we're really excited about that. Over 16 pallets of free food have been picked up in three trips, which could not have happened without that van. The Better Impact Volunteer System has begun to be set up. GA, uh, GA worked 21 cases in March 2024 and granted $10,541.76 in total assistance with $7,110.94 in rental. There were 20 LIHEAP applications, fielded 242 caseworker calls, and there was one RTA registration. Transportation, there were 688 rides in March from Pace's Ride to Page. There were 162 rides in March. The average ride cost and average mileage cost keep going down. The number for the year, well, there's um, a link there. Uh, passports, the Ohio Township Press have 45 passport applications this month. That is awesome. We actually got some really nice feedback about that on the Nextdoor app, which I did share with the staff, and they were really, really happy about that. Recycling, this Saturday, April 13th, from 9 to 1, 9, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., there'll be a recycling and shredding event. We have partnered with DuPage County, Scarce, Lions Club, eWorks, Project Cure, and Interstate Transmissions to increase the impact. Highway Commissioner Long, please let us know if you have any changes to the clerk's documents sent. Okay. And okay. then... Say that again, Liz. It's a note. Highway Commissioner Young, please let us know if you need any changes to the clerk's documents sent. I'm not sure what that... It, you know what that means? I mean, okay. Yeah. So she's not on, so we can't ask her. Okay. Um, the proclamation. Um, <coughs> not, do I need to read the proclamation out loud, or can we? Up to you. Um, you don't have to. Yeah, I'm not going to read it. Thank you. Yeah, we all. <laughs> yes. um, the proclamation for the stormwater management department is in the packet as well. You can certainly read through that. And reports of elected officials. Highway Commissioner Young. I have nothing in this kind Tax Assessor Trowbridge? No report, thank you. Trustee McGovern? No report, thank you. Trustee Page? The only thing I have is that Garden opened. We had our first meeting on Sunday this week, and anybody who is interested in volunteering, we've got spots for you. So Excellent. <laughs> Great. Um, I guess that's me next. Um, the only thing I want to report is, and I think this will speak to some of the questions from the audience, I had an idea several months ago to implement a coffee with the trustees. It would give um, our, our, our constituents an opportunity to come and ask the questions that you're asking here and have them answered because the way this works, we're not allowed to respond to you in public comment. Um, and the reason why public comment is held at the beginning is because if we held it at the end, it would be it could be cumbersome because some of our meetings go well into the evening sometimes. So I think that is in your best interest that we don't wait and do public comment at, you know, 10 and 11 o'clock at night. So, but I think it's an important point to, um, to make. And so that's why we've created this opportunity um, for you to come and have coffee with the trustees. We are still confirming the, the next date of that, but it's always, the goal is to have it within the week of the meeting while your thoughts and your questions are fresh in your mind, okay? So we would welcome you to participate. Um, that information is on the um, the um, social media pages 
and uh, we'll make sure it also goes on the lyletownship.com website. Okay. And we would, we really encourage you to come. The first two have gone really well. I think um, the first, the first one was uh, Trustee McGovern and I, we, we held that at um, uh, the Pound Cake Bakery downtown Lyle. And so we had a couple of people and then Trustee Page, you and Trustee Robinson held the next one. Yep. And how, how was that? Very good. We discussed that last meeting. It was very good, very good questions. Yeah. It's yeah. a great way to connect with the community. So hopefully everyone here knows that um, you are always welcome to come to those. It's a more, it's an informal, we can actually talk, have dialogue, have respectful exchange of ideas, and we would encourage you to do that. Okay. So that's, that's my, my, that's my, my only report. Um, any old business? Any new business? We're going to be done within an hour. It was supposed to be well, 15 minutes. No, wait, you can't do that. Don't jinx it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I was doing really good there. Uh, any new business to discuss? Um, let's see. So, and then we're going to, if I'm going to make a motion to, uh, can I? Hmm? Do what you want. You could. You could just pass it or you can make a motion to defer it either way. I'm going to make a motion to defer the re review and approval of the minutes from the March 20, um, March 13th, 2024 meeting um, to our next meeting. I'll second. Roll call vote. Trustee Geis? Yes. Trustee Pay? Yes. Trustee McGovern? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call. All in favor. All in favor. All in favor. Don't go. Yeah, don't go in there. Don't go in Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. 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 Thank Aye. you. All right. Seven. Seven twenty. Thank you. Um, so no. the supervisor said that oh, she executed and signed the cross easement access agreement. Our cross access easement.